what Giancarlos would do, which is just, I had never seen on a set either, is usually backstage as you're entering, right? It's plywood and maybe a little light, key light, and genie stop. You know, everybody's kind of back there. He finished every set. So as you were walking on set, you were walking into these balls. You were walking into Norma's house. They were all finished so beautifully. Again, it's every, um, what you don't see here, every single department working at warp speed and top level every day. I guess, Abe, you're sitting next to me. I'd love to start with you. Uh, your resume is incredible. Uh, Dead to Me, Nurse Jackie. You wrote the script for Eyes of Tammy Faye, which rightly won Jessica Chastain and her Oscar. George and Tammy, this show is unbelievable, and it seems like, I don't know, such a challenge, I guess, or was it such a challenge for you, and how did it differ from the kind of previous work that you've done? Well, I, I, this is actually the most me thing I've ever made, just in terms of like my, like my personal aesthetic, my sense of humor. Um, I think, but it is, it is in keeping with the other stuff. It's like they're all about iconoclastic, performative women who break the rules in their own way. So I do feel like there's there there's a continuity between them, even if they, they sort of feel very different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Kristen, I love uh, Maxine, obviously. Thank He's an you. incredible character. You. Uh, you're welcome. Uh, she's someone who's an outsider, but obviously trying to get in, has this incredible enthusiasm and, and sunniness to her that I find so great and really earnest. And I guess, like, when you were reading the script, like, when, when at what point were you like, yes, this is somebody I really want to play, and, like, kind of, like, what 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 really hooked you? I, I really wanted to do it very early on from the first call that I got and um, knowing the people involved, and then I met Abe, I read the script. I've never read anything like that. So many great parts for women in the show. I love Maxine, um, and Abe is just an incredible writer and person, and... Um, always wanted to work with, with Laura and yeah, when the cast kind of came together, we were just like, yes, there was a million reasons to say yes. Josh, you have uh, a great character. I, watching the show when you're, when you hear Maxine talking about Douglas, I was like, not exactly sure what to expect at all. And like, was, I didn't even, at some point I was like, is he even actually real in the, at least in the pilot here, right? Like it's kind of sound like he was made from Niagara Falls or something, but he's real. He's great. You bring him in, I guess, like, how did you kind of play his dynamic and like how did you kind of approach him especially you know coming into like we see him here coming in later in the first episode but obviously he's such a big factor in the rest of the season well clearly he is a fantasy <laughs> 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 you will find that out um no <laughs> um no he uh he was the most fun character maybe i've ever played uh, and also because you get to see him descend and the two of us truly descend into this kind of wicked mess that we create for ourselves all over the place. Um, and, you know, it was, it, I think there's like a comedic Bonnie and Clyde to these two characters. And even there's some kind of wonderful, I would say, Easter eggs that are thrown into the show throughout that I think reference some of, like we found, I have, I have this great photograph I showed Abe at one point of Bonnie and Clyde standing in front of a car that, we, that I think is in the show. And there's these different moments like that throughout that we were able to sneak in there that, yeah. For you and Kristen, uh, creating that dynamic and your chemistry is so great, I guess. Was that like immediate or like kind of just was it, you know, how did you kind of like find that, finding the relationship, I guess? I mean, we immediately liked each other as people, <laughs> if that's what you mean. <laughs> um, but I think the relationship, Josh and I had talked about it in the very beginning because on paper, it may seem like one thing, but we kind of made a choice very early on that there is love there and they really love each other. And that really informed how we played a lot of things. And I don't know, I think that was important that we sort of. I think it would be easy that. to have, you know, the idea that their relationship is cynical. And I, I don't think it is. One of the things I really like about this show, as much as there's a kind of like bitchiness or nastiness sometimes, I don't find cynicism in this show at all. It's something Abe has talked about a little bit with the difference between other shows. Um, and obviously with Kristen, for me, like going into it, I, you know, only vaguely met her from uh, through a friend that we work together with. But I have so much respect for her. I mean, obviously being crazy gifted comedically but the difference is she's an actress and they don't truly often go hand in hand and part of that is Kristen's work has such a, a, a like a heartbreak to it or a, a pathos to it and I think that's something Abe is really working with with all of the characters and you clearly see it with what you know Leslie does in, in that scene you know later on in the show where you see her 
breaking in a way and the sadness. And I feel like that's one of the, the through lines that happens throughout. The humor is kind of constantly hitting on a different level. It, you meant like I totally agree about that lack of cynicism on the show. Is that difficult to actually do in such a cynical world, I guess? Like not, you know what I mean? Like, and does it help setting it in a period setting, I guess, to make sure it doesn't have that cynicism that maybe we would have now? Well, I, I sort of feel like there's a glut of c- cynicism. Yeah. So I was like, if we're going to do a show about women at each other's throats, which is like, is sort of tired that you, I want, I want everybody to have a certain decency at all times. And I think the show's really good natured, even as it goes to dark places. Like it's a very friendly show, right? Like, and I think we've seen so many antihero shows and I love them. So it's like, well, let's do an antihero show where the antihero is a eternal optimist, (laughs) you know, where she wants the best for everybody. You know, and it's like, and and that's, you know, and like, that's just a a fresh, sort of a fresh take on something we've seen. Yeah. You know, it's really great. I think it comes, and throughout the season, I love the way we all like it. And it's like, it's a group of nice people, you know, and we all genuinely like each other. And and so um, it was a very convivial set and people liked hanging out with each other. And, you know, I think it shows. And I think as the, as the season progresses, what you'll see is like, it just gets more delicious and you can just tell that everybody is just kind of having the time of their lives yeah Let, leslie i feel like you are definitely having the time of your life on this show i don't know i think it's great i love in the first episode Dinah is so incredible and i guess like for you what was it like yeah like what was it about uh, this character and like why did you want to like kind of sign on to the show um i i just remember reading the audition sides and being like oh my god who, like you don't nobody writes a woman hits 40 and they're like well goodbye it's over for you and then all of a sudden this show was like I'd never gotten the chance to it was so complicated it was like clearly funny but all the funny like all the darkness underneath because to me I think that's what great comedy comes from great darkness and great pain and in that scene in the bar it was it was just so beautiful and heartbreaking. Like everyone's like, "Oh, Dinah's a bitch," but I, to me, I like kind. I love her. I think like she's so complicated, and I think she wants desperately to be Maxine's friend. Like I'm always like, "God, if they could just, I just get out of my way, she would be like the best." I don't think she has any friends, and she wants them so desperately, and and I, I don't know. I just the 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 writing was so incredible, and then to have Kristen, and again, what Josh just said, like, everyone's like, Kristen's, yes, she's funny, but like, Kristen is the real fucking deal. Like, she is the real fucking deal actress. (laughs) And you guys don't even know what she's about to do. Like, by episode 10, I literally, like, there was a scene, and I was watching her, and I was like, oh, if they don't give you the Emmy, Emmy, I'm going to burn somebody's house down. (laughs) So I'm just letting you know. Um, But like really, it was really glorious to see and to work with everybody. And Abe writes these words and and he gives us room. and, And I remember this thing, we were shooting on the golf course and you create such a lovely writer's room. And he had to be on set, and then I look over, and I was like, what are, what are they doing over there? And it was Abe and like three writers with their laptops out on the golf course writing in between setups. And I'd never seen, like, I, it's just you ran a room like I'd never seen a room run. I'd, I'd never seen a show run like that. I'd never been with, the actors are so generous. It, it really was like nothing I'd ever had the joy to work on, and I just feel very lucky. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, let's round of applause for that. That's really good. Chris, and I was reading an interview Abe did, not, again, not to gas you up even further, but you're so good on this show, and I read an interview Abe did, I think he compared you to like the, a Buster Keaton type, honestly, or like how you're that talented and like kind of a once in a generation talent, I guess, and I find you incredibly funny, obviously, like everybody's saying, but you are, the act, the drama stuff you're absolutely but crushing as sad. well. What's up? No. <laughs> but I'm very sad. No, yeah, I just find no, the, the, the dramatic stuff you do so well, 
and like kind of effortless as well. When you like what it, it feels like a role that allows you to paint with every brush, right. Or whatever, work with every tool in the box, whatever hoary cliche you want to say. But I guess for you, like what was, was there some, was there a specific challenge or something that you were excited to get to do in the show that maybe you hadn't done before? Yeah. Well, first I just want to say I was extremely lucky to be, I'm not in these scenes by myself. Like I'm with, the most incredible cast. I mean, doing scenes with the, especially these people up here. I mean, I, uh, and again, with Abe's writing, like to be in an environment where you're constantly supported and people want you to succeed. And we all just wanted to like help each other and make a great show. And I'm not answering your question, but <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to give some props up here. Um, but, oh, challenging on the yes. show. I mean, I, I think you had kind of touched on it earlier and, and what Abe was saying about this person that wants something that seems very shallow and uh, materialistic, yet she's super, super positive, and we want the audience to like her and root for her. That was something that we you know, talked about a lot, and having that sort of sunny disposition was just this weird sort of twist on it that I, I don't know just made it more fun for me to play but it was it was hard to make sure that like the audience was going to root for me even though i want something very very shallow yeah but they do yeah they do, it's great <laughs> you have a great scene uh, you, uh, you when you were saying they're like not into my question reminding later in the show you have a, a great scene with uh, mindy's character Anne, who is a journalist and she <laughs> says something that i wrote it was you, your Maxine answers the question. Uh, this is, I guess, not a spoiler, but I just found it so great. It's like so wonderfully worded and so lacking in detail. Uh, <laughs> just an incredible response. And, and so many get to play journalists on the show. You've probably had many experiences with journalists over the years. Dummies like me, I'm sure. Uh, how was it like? Did you draw from your own experience and stuff to play a journalist on the show? And like, you know, like what was like your inspirations, I guess, for this character? Well, I love that you're calling Anna journalist. She thanks you very much. <laughs> um, as editor of the Shiny Sheet, um, you're a little aspirational. Um, but what's kind of great is that she really is the pre social media gatekeeper of these ladies and who steps forward and who doesn't and who gets covered and who doesn't and all that jazz. But what I love about what Abe created for her was that she takes a genuine liking to Maxine, um, which I think shocks her. Um, and uh, so, and then hijinks ensue. But um, no, I didn't find it hard to play a journalist. Um, <laughs> thank you again, I'm gonna keep that as the best thing that happened today. Um, <laughs> But I found I found her to be so again in, enriched. In most shows, it would just be this person is on the outer circle. But what's interesting about Anne, and you will see um, when you tune in later, is that she is on the outs, but she's also a member of the club, so she's on the ins too. We're not sure how, um, but it sort of gives this really interesting access, I think, to the audience. Right, so we're spectators, but we also get to get inside. So, um, yeah, it's a great ride. <laughs> <laughs> you all, I think you're right though too with uh, the fact that uh, Anne and there is like a little bit of Maxine and Anne, or like Anne and Maxine, right, as well. And I think that kind of like is really interesting as the show mo moves forward. The, the uh, I love the obviously if you guys just watch this, the, the production design, the crafts on the show are incredible. I guess for first for the actors, like. Uh, for Leslie, I guess, like you'd add, maybe you or anybody. I mean, the, the costumes are so awesome. Like, makeup and hair is incredible. Like, what is it like? How much does that help you as an actor, I guess, like to get into the role when you have this, like, top, top flight, like, production design and, and then you're walking into these sets and the costumes and stuff? Did you guys find, I mean, for, the, I found like it took a little bit of like the acting out of it because the clothes, yeah. we were in one of the first scenes. And I crossed my leg and somebody came up and said, oh, no, no, women didn't cross their legs. And I was like, what? And they were like, no, you sat like this. And, and as soon as you did that, we'd be at the store and I'd be like, oh, my God, my back is killing me. But you really do start to pucker and hold yourself and, and it lends itself to a way that they are, those damn fingernails, my, I couldn't stop talking with my hands. I mean, it's a real Dinah thing, but like, we were upset. I mean, Christy and I would be like, when are we, we were like cats with feathers. Um, we just couldn't stop. I don't know, it was really fun being in the makeup trailer and getting our wigs. I mean, just when you would put your wig on, like yep. how different, 
And then Same sudden, with Leslie. It's, hey, Leslie. Oh, oh yeah, no, it's Dino. Dino. I you know, still don't recognize her as a blonde. Because <laughs> I, I never saw her as a blonde for seven months. <laughs> Tate Taylor once said once, he was like, Bib, you should really think about going brown. I was like, I am a brunette. This is fake. And then he's like, you should really think about going back. You should do brown. I was like, do you think my hair looks like this? This is like, I don't know how many women's hair has made up. My hair would never look like this. But it was, um, it was, <laughs> and it was really, it was, it was amazing. It took yeah. like the acting out of it. It just holds you. And Alex, our costume designer, is extraordinary. Yeah. I mean, every costume, nothing was bogus. No, down to our underpinnings, down to our, you know, I mean, ladies. Underpinnings. Underpinnings. <laughs> I don't like to say bras and panties. That's like That's underpinnings. Back in the day. <laughs> Uh, your squirrel covers. Um, <laughs> I don't know. But down to that. I mean, it was really fascinating. Also, as a woman, I'm so grateful for Lycra and stretch fabric and non-confrontational oh waistbands because, I mean, like when... when um, when Julia Duffy was in the pool swimming away, she's like, where is the elasticity in this weight in my bathing suit as she's kicking back? I mean, she puts that check in her in her swim cap. I mean, Julia Duffy, that deserves a round of applause. Yes. Like, she, I mean, she's remarkable it. on this show. So good. Right? Uh, I'm fully a nepotistic hire on this show. My sister-in-law is the costume designer, oh, yeah. and I got, I got this job because of her. Um, she, she spoke to Kristen about it, really. But I think I think Alex would say if she was here, obviously it's Abe, but it's you know, and I'm not just saying this to be politically correct. Apple gave these guys extraordinary. Um, Resources. I mean, truly, like she was given the ability to say, I want to do this with a level of authenticity. I mean, down to the fabric, right? If they couldn't find the actual uh, pieces, the vintage pieces, which were, are very difficult to find and, and were scouring, uh, you know, obviously the wardrobe houses all over L.A., but also she got a lot of stuff. My understanding is on Etsy. It's all very authentic. But then she would get if she couldn't find she would get the actual fabric from the late 1960s that was used by you know, Cartier or whatever. Um, and she would craft those those incredible costumes out of that fabric. So it was a deep passion project for her and obviously John Carlos, right? And so. she, yeah, John Carlos, yeah. And she had she also had she said she had buyers mm -hmm. in across America scouring vintage like that to me is like a level uh, that that was high level. Like uh, that doesn't happen on a TV show. Like that was like next level. She found a second in the second episode. Spoiler alert: Kristen stands up and walks into the pool. Oh, it's so good! In this vintage gown, and <laughs> I I added it to the script last minute, and Alice is like, "You mean I have to find a second one?" <laughs> <laughs> so she found a double of this vintage gown. It's 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 really remarkable. And if, if I can give a shout out to John Carlos, yes. who's our yes. production designer, and also Ellen Reed, who's our set decorator. Um, what you've seen is nothing yet. Yeah. You would go on set and open a drawer and there'd be gifts there. <laughs> and as a prop ho, I loved it. Um, uh, also, what John Carlos would do, which is just, I had never seen on a set either, is usually backstage as you're entering, right? It's plywood and maybe a little light, key light, and. Genie stop. You know, everybody's kind of back there. He finished every set. So as you were walking on set, you were walking into these balls. You were walking into Norma's house. They were all finished so beautifully. Again, it's every, um, what you don't see here, every single department working at warp speed and top level every day. So Yeah, there was a scene in the bank. Maybe we don't want to tell Apple how we spent their money, but... <laughs> There was a fish tank. Oh, a It'll be our secret. Don't there worry was about a it. fish tank behind us, and John Carlos. Yeah, it was a fish tank that was in the in, in the, the in the in the location. Like it was just it there, was and it was there. derelict. We didn't do the, the, it, yeah. yeah, it wasn't working. And Allison and I are in the bank, and there's a fish tank behind us. And he color coordinated the fish. He found <laughs> like different colors of these fish, and they were like flew from them, Romania. Apple closure ears. I think he flew them in from like Thailand or yeah. something. <laughs> I'm. But he coordinated them with with 
Alex, are, the yes. costume designer, so that the colors would just yes. just pop. Maybe not Thailand, but and, and, uh, something no, like and so that. and then we couldn't get the fish to swim past at the right time, so we had somebody back there feeding the fish above so that they would cross at the right time. And it worked. It was fantastic. Yes. So you have that to look forward yeah. to. That's awesome. <laughs> but you'll you'll also see as the show develops too that the show starts to have a, a noises off theatrical quality where you're opening up a door and walking into a room and going out into another room and there becomes this like through line between it. So from a production design standpoint, you had to have that level of continuity. It was very very. Um, elaborate and rich because as Abe was starting to move these cameras from room to room and performance to performance and story to story because it, it does become very kaleidoscopic and, and it's moving at the same time it had a and I saw I was like oh wow this is this is you know noises off it's got that kind of very theatrical quality to it can I give one shout out to Please. um this is Again, I'm, I'm not blowing smoke up your ass, Abe. But literally, we had, this is, I've never been on a set like this, with this happens. When we were doing one of the balls, we had this guy, we were doing Stone Mabel. And the man who was just like the MC, he was like the auctioneer guy. And he had one line that he said. <laughs> That's, so do it. Will do you please it. do it, Abe, what his line is? Please. Yeah, $20,000 for this old stone purse. <laughs> and that was his line. And we died. And Abe was... All day long, he did this line. Yes. Nobody can stop. By the way, he is now like currently on my voicemail. <laughs> um, but he was so great. Abe goes, he's at every, he's, he's at every ball. Like I, and I thought as an actor, I, I remember by like the 10th episode, I and mean, he also drove my, drove the yacht. Uh, do you drive a yacht? You captain a yacht, or whatever you do to the yacht. He did that to the yacht I had. And I was like, he, had, he was anything, Abe would be like, he's coming in. And I thought, I said to him, I said, how, how cool. Like, you came in for a job that was going to be like one scene. Basically an extra. He, I, mean, he, I hung out with him before, and he was like, I was an extra on this thing. You know, and, and yeah, he would then became. He's in like yeah, almost. Every and he's episode. in every episode, and he's like, it doesn't. But so do you know brilliant. what I mean? Like, but that's like, <laughs> but you saw that, and you were like, and you wrote it. It's really cool. I don't know. I again, I don't. You don't I see think, that often. I think when I call Kristen, his picture comes up. <laughs> <laughs> it does. We love him, Wesley. It was yeah, a yes. Wesley. It's a, from in a in a costume. Yes, that's what comes up when you call me. <laughs> I love him, Wesley. Love him to death. Yeah. So great. The ensemble is absolutely incredible. Obviously, of these actors here, we haven't even mentioned Alice and Janney. I mean, or uh, Carol Burnett. Yes. Carol Burnett. Uh, Carol Burnett. Uh, yep. Julie Ricky Duffy Martin, mentioned. Ricky Martin. Ricky Martin. Ricky Martin. Bruce yes. Dern. Laura Dern. Yes. It felt like, it, when you're casting the show, Abe, I get, it, to me, I was watching, I was like, this feels like an Avengers assemble of like every <laughs> significant era of television for 70 years, right? Like everyone on the show. <laughs> Has like like Newhart, like Carol Burnett show, all these great shows, like everybody up here Facts from all these Facts incredible shows. Life. Back to life, popular. How about like let's go Saturday Night Live, like everything. I mean, were you intentionally doing that, or did it kind of just naturally happen as you were casting the ensemble? Well, you always dream big and okay. then end up gratefully for your fifth choice with your fifth choice. And with this, we got our first person uh, in ev in every <laughs> case. It was it was remarkable, and I do think there is a tumbling effect too. It's like Laura Laura was the EP that I developed this with, and there's an imprimatur there of artistic quality and a legacy there, and then Kristen signed on, and now you have Kristen and Laura, and then that's that that sort of integrity and that that quality is doubled, and then Allison Janney signs on, and then Carol Burnett's like, I want to be in that, <laughs> Literally, like, because because good actors enjoy being with good actors. So as, as much as I'd like to say it's all the script and oh, they read it and they just, they had to be in it. It's like, <laughs> they, actors enjoy other actors. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they, like, they like the feeling of a troupe. We, you know, I was an actor, I, like, I, I came out of the theater, I like the tribe feeling, I came out, I was a chorus boy. Like mm -hmm. I love that community feeling on a set. Um, so I think I, it, it was sort of a snowball mm -hmm. effect. Um, but it, but it started because this was a this was a, a Laura Dern production, right? You know, and then all of a sudden people are like, oh, what? You know. <laughs> yeah. Well, there so was also lucky. wild, unusual professionalism that was like, 
almost competitive. Like who was going to show up earliest to work? You know, I mean, it was like, and who was the more Josh. prepared? Who was the earliest? Josh. Josh. But, no, there you go. Well, Congratulations, Josh. I won that award. But. <laughs> For, but first to get ready always was Carol. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's true. So Carol, I mean, like, just unbelievable, Carol Burnett. Like, and she's so funny on the show. I know, like, you know, when you see the rest of the show, the, you're like, it is. She's absolutely hilarious. Like, has not lost a step. Right. Like, is so funny and has so much to do, which is really exciting as fans. I guess, like, you guys, I'm sure all of you grew up watching Car like Carol Burnett showed all these things. Did you have like Carol Burnett? Like, what was it like? I guess to get to work with her so close, like Kristen. Like, what was it like yeah. to get to work with her? Like, uh, like mean, with her in scenes. Yes, she's <laughs> inspired me more than I can say. I mean, that's how I first saw sketch comedy, and it was a show that was led by a woman at that time, which was not happening. And she's, I mean, she's amazing, and everyone fell in love with her, and she's so nice and funny, and just embraces literally all of us and she's warm and she's a light and I mean every 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 time we spend time with her it gets better and better and you're like gosh you're just the best I have trouble responding to my son's school's email Carol Burnett has responded to every single <laughs> fan letter she's ever gotten no what? I really <laughs> oh a hundred percent Wow. There are stories of people walking on set, who crew members and different people who'd written her a letter back in the 1970s that they had that she'd responded to or signed a T-shirt from their high school theatrical program that she's that she'd signed or photographed. I mean, it's it's insane. she just called someone yeah. last week. A, a young girl wrote her and she had her phone number and she called her. Wow. She's, she sets that bar so high and she walks on set. She takes a minute with pretty much anyone who's willing to walk up to her has, you know, and, and, and says, hi, what's your name? And hello. And, you know, she just, it's, it's, it's just striking. It, it, it takes all the, I, I don't know, the, the gauze away from stardom really, truly. Yeah. We, we have to wrap up here in a little bit, but I just, last thing, I guess, just can you guys, would you be able to tease a little for what we can expect from the rest of the first season? And I guess also, Fingers crossed for season two, because I really would love to see what happens next, I guess, as someone who's seen the whole season. But we could tease whatever's going on in the rest of the season. What do you think? I'm so scared to say well, anything. I, I would say... <laughs> hey, I, let, let's let Adrian... I have a yacht. I, was, I, would, I have a boat, guys. She has a boat. I would just say to expect the unexpected, and I think the, the, the thing that was the guiding principle, especially in this day and age in the writer's room, it's like, okay, guys, and I've said this to the writers over and over, it's like, when they feed our scripts to the machine, let's break it. <laughs> that, that chat G, I wanna fuck up chat GPT. <laughs> so when, when, when episode eight, you'll see it someday, goes into the machine, it's going to mess up the algorithm. Mm -hmm. And that's the goal. That's awesome. Just ag aggressive originality. <laughs> it, it's really great, the show is fantastic. <laughs> Uh, Palm Royale, you can watch the first three episodes right now on Apple TV. So like I said before, go home immediately and watch episodes two and three because they're fantastic. And then watch the rest of the season uh, as it airs on Apple. Uh, if everyone can stay seated, we're going to let, let them all run off to their next thing. They're so busy. But uh, thank you so much again. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. And Leslie Bibb. Thank you. Thank you.